Hello everyone. Uh, this is the second part of our plant tissue culture series. In the lecture one, we have already discussed the basic idea of what plant tissue culture is, and we have also discussed the primary term which is associated or based on which plant tissue culture is performed, and that is totipotency. Now, once you already know what totipotency is, and you've already gone through the lecture one, the next thing that we are going to start with is what actually takes place when we perform this plant tissue culture in a laboratory. Now, the first thing that I want to introduce you, the concept that I want to introduce you to is the concept of micropropagation. Now, what is micropropagation? You all, I'm sure, have heard about vegetative propagation. Now, what is vegetative propagation? Vegetative propagation is a process where we take a small part of the plant, maybe a stem cutting, a shoot cutting basically, or some other propagule of the plant, and grow it vegetatively, vegetatively meaning that there is no sexual, uh, sexual reproduction involved in this process. So that is vegetative propagation. Now instead of taking a small part of the plant or a vegetative propagule of the plant, I am taking a small cell of the plant. So I have taken this entire process of propagation to a very uh, small uh, scale or let us say to a very micro scale. So now the propagation that I am getting, it is also vegetative, it is also, uh, it does not again involve sexual reproduction, but now because I have taken it to a micro scale, I will call it micro propagation, vegetative propagation at a micro scale, alright. So basically tissue culture, uh, the process of growing organs, the process of growing an entire plant in vitro will sometimes be referred to as micro propagation. Now for this micro propagation, what are the prerequisites? What are the conditions that we require? Now suppose you are growing rice in a field. When you are growing rice in a field, any plant other than rice in that field is a weed for you. Why is it a weed for you? Because it is competing with your crop plant for the same nutrients that are present in the soil. Right? Now suppose I am growing a small plant in a test tube. Now, when I am growing the small plant in a test tube, any other cell that tries to grow on the same nutrient medium that I have allowed or that I have given to my growing plant will be a competition for my plant, right? So, any other cell other than the cells of my plant of interest are an infection in that test tube. So the first process of starting with tissue, tissue culture is making sure that no other living cells arise in that area, no other living cells are present in that area except for the one that I am about to introduce. This process of gaining zero living organisms or no other living organisms should be present or at least we attempt 99.9% .9 elimination of all other organisms in the culture that condition is known as attainment of a septic condition. This a septic condition can be acquired by several methods. Now, let us one by one look at the methods by which we attain a septic cultures. Now, there are three methods that have been discussed with in your syllabus. The first being steam sterilization by an instrument called as autoclave. Now what is autoclave? Autoclave is basically a pressure cooker. Yes, it's a pressure cooker with some uh, modern additives or let us say some safety additives because it is going to attain a much higher pressure. Let us first look at the diagram of an autoclave, a simplified diagram of an autoclave. Now if you look at this autoclaving instrument, the first thing that you should notice about this is that there are two vessels or two chambers. There is an outer chamber and there is an inner chamber. Now the outer chamber will hold the water which will ultimately get converted into steam because this is a steam type of sterilization. The inner chamber will contain everything that is required to be sterilized. So the inner chamber will have your glasswares, your media, your uh, instruments, whatever you need to sterilize will be placed in the inner chamber, the inner cold drawn. Cold drawn is the vessel, the inner vessel. 
the outer chamber which has the water in it can either have a heating coil within itself or if it is a primitive or a stove top type of an autoclave then the outer chamber will not have any heating coil you will place the entire chamber on a stove top or a gas top for the gas to heat the water so that it boils now what is important is that in this entire thing this entire chamber is guarded by some pressure valves so the pressure of this unit is maintained at a certain range the maintenance of pressure or how this how much the pressure is attained is seen or it is monitored with the help of a pressure gauge there are safety valves so that the pressure of the steam does not go beyond the permissible limits and there is a drainage valve which helps the extra steam to escape when the whenever it precipitates or whenever it cools down now the idea is that water will get heated the water will boil boiling of the water will generate the steam steam i hope you all understand that the temperature of steam is much higher than that of boiling water boiling water water boils at 100 degrees celsius but when it gets converted into steam the temperature of steam is much higher than that of water so this steam will enter into the inner chamber and it will ultimately lead to sterilization now remember that the pressure that is generated in this chamber chamber has two important functions the two important functions are the first the primary function is that when there is pressure water will boil faster water will boil more easily the second and the more important function because of which we have a pressure chamber is because because of this pressure there will be far better penetration of the steam into the objects that we are wanting to get sterilized so penetration of the steam into the areas or into the nooks and corners of whatever instruments whatever media whatever glassware's you are you have kept in the inner cauldron in order to get sterilized the pressure will help the penetration better and therefore it will be sterilized better now normally the sterilization takes place at around 15 psi psi is the unit to uh, to to watch over the pressure psi stands for pound per square inch uh, pound per square inch is the unit of pressure with which we uh, measure the pressure that is attained by the steam in these heating chambers now there are certain things so there are certain instruments there are certain chemicals that cannot be sterilized with the help of steam the reason we say that they cannot be sterilized with the help of steam is because certain things may require dry heat suppose that there are some chemicals there are some parts of the media that are water soluble or suppose that there are certain spores or there are certain microorganisms that cannot be killed at the temperature that is attained by steam for all such cases we have the second type of or the second method of sterilization the second method of sterilization is sterilization with the help of dry heat in an instrument that is called as the hot air oven now the working of a hot air oven is again a very very simple uh, thing again you have an outer chamber and an inner chamber the outer chamber will have heating coils and there will be a fan to circulate the heat the inner chamber will be the space where you keep your media you keep your instruments you keep your glassware in order for them to get sterilized now in this instrument the temperature that is acquired at the time that is required for sterilization may be different for uh, for different purposes at 160 degree celsius glassware and instruments can be sterilized so they are kept for around 1 to 2 hours however at 190 degree celsius 6 to 12 minutes are enough to sterilize the glassware and instruments at 60 degree celsius that is only 60 degree celsius you have to keep your glassware or instruments overnight for them to get sterilized now the basic uh, difference that we do or the basic rule thumb rule that we follow in the labs is that mostly media and those glassware in which the media will directly be poured or be stored for a very long time all such glassware and all such media are usually autoclaved 
uh, instruments like the scalpel, the forcep, uh, or maybe the petri plates in which you have to process any kind of tissue, such kind of glasswares can be sterilized in the hot air oven also. Usually, media are sterilized in uh, with the help of steam sterilization that is in the autoclave. The third method of sterilization, the third method of having an aseptic culture is with the help of using chemical sterilants. Now these chemical sterilants, they will mostly be used when we are sterilizing an explant. Now, what is an explant? An explant is basically an experimental plant or an excised plant. Excised plant ka matlab hai when we cut out some part of a plant or when we have taken a small piece of say a leaf, a stem, a shoot tip, a root tip etc. So that excised, that cut out piece of plant or some scientists say that it is the experimental plant. So whatever the experimental plant or the excised plant, the plant material that we have is the explant. Now, either this explant or let us say we are using the seeds directly to be sown and we want a small plant in it. So these uh, surfaces, whether it is an excised plant or whether it is the surface of the seed, they may have microorganisms on the surface, uh, thriving on their surfaces. So before they are introduced into the culture medium, the culture medium which has already been sterilized with the help of autoclaving or hot air oven or whatever, before we do that, we also have to get rid of all those microorganisms that are present on the surface of these living tissues. So what we do is that we expose these tissues to some amount of chemical sterilants for a fixed period of time. The commonly used sterilants are sodium hypochlorite, mercury chloride and ethanol. Uh, we can use sodium hypochlorite and ethanol in combination or we can use all three of them in combination in different time intervals. This time intervals again are standardized depending upon what plant material we are using. Now uh, in the current scenario you must have heard about sodium hypochlorite very often because it has also been used to sterilize surfaces which have been exposed to coronavirus. Similarly, ethanol is again a sterilant. We know that all the hand sanitizers that we use, they have an ethanol composition or maybe a, a isopropanol composition also. But ethanol is again a very uh, common or a typical uh, alcohol that is used for hand sanitizers. So again, you know that these three chemicals, they are typical sterilants they will all be used to sterilize living surfaces or surfaces in order to make them aseptic in order to kill the spores the bacteria or even the virus that are present on the surfaces of these uh, tissues so the three methods of attaining a septic culture that we discussed with was autoclave the first one the second one was dry heat with the help of dry heat in a hot air oven and the third one was with the help of chemicals in a chemical sterilant or we sterilize the surfaces of explants, seeds, etc. with the help of certain chemical sterilants. And that covers our second topic under plant tissue culture. For the third topic, we will be discussing the various components of a media that are used to culture the plant. And that will be a part of the third part of our plant tissue culture lecture series.